To lift, to love, and to give, that is the question. But there is one thing greater to open up your heart and to let it sing. There's no walls, no barrier resistant that can stop the great tide of the everlasting hope. So through it all, keep hope alive. Lift every voice and sing till I can heaven ring. Ring with the harmony of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise.
from Walden University with a focus on public health emergency preparedness and minority communities. She now holds the title of Public Health Administrator II and is, direct, and is the director of the Division of Social Health Pro Programs and Minority Health for the Nassau County Department of Health. I would now like to present this award to Ms. Carolyn You know who else is a black star? Me. You know who else is a black star? 
who we and we be shining and shining while we rhyming and rhyming. We be shining and shining while we rhyming and rhyming. Everyone hop on the one and the sounds of the two. It's the third eye vision. Five side dimension is the eighth light. It's gonna shine bright tonight. It's the third eye vision and the five side dimension. You know, the light go from the dark the other ways backwards. It's absurd. Make you wanna croak like a blackbird. That's right. Go from living your first day to your last night. Sometimes you show like lit on your clothes when you froze in the black light. Dead that. Get your head wrapped like Badu. We see right through your voodoo just like Eve's Bayou. Dealing with that black magic, trying to civilize you, not walk on by you. Like civilized till you get blacklisted. It'll be unlucky for you to be a black cat, a panther. Revolution is the answer. That's what we need. Greed plague my people like the cancer, true indeed. Now black people unite and let's all get down. Everyone hop on the one and the sounds of the two. It's the third eye vision, five side dimension. It's the eighth light. It's gonna shine bright tonight. Everyone hop on the one. That means you. It's the third eye vision, five side dimension. It's the eighth light. It's gonna shine bright tonight. It's the third eye vision and the Five side dimension equaling up to eight. Light shine bright. This year marks Carolyn Silkin's 50th year in the nursing profession. She has received her associate degree in nursing from Nassau Community College. She also received a Bachelor of Science in Nursing from Adelphi and completed Columbia University's Master's Nursing Education program. She has um, she has served in many capacities within the nursing profession. In 1990, she started her first entrepreneurship, Northeastern Childbirth Education Program. Carolyn is married to Joshua Simpkins. They've been married for 56 years. And they have three children, seven grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren. I would like to present this award to Miss Carolyn Simpkins. Primary and secondary school in the New York City public school system. He graduated from Andrew Jackson High School in 1976 and matriculated at Howard University. He received a Bachelor of Science degree in Zoology in 1981. In 1986, he earned a Doctor of Medicine degree from Meharry Medical College, Nashville, Tennessee. He chose a specialty of obstetrics and gynecology. He completed four years of training in his field at Howard University Hospital, Washington, D.C., after which he returned to New York to work in the New York City Health and Hospitals Corporation at Queens Hospital Center. He worked as an attending physician at QHC and also as a physician in charge at the South Queens Community Health Center on Linden and Guy Fuel Boulevards until 1993 at which time he became part of the full-time teaching faculty at Long Island Jewish Medical Center, where he now holds the position of Vice Chairman in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynology. I would like to present this award to Dr. Alan Tolles.
You just don't really get what it is to be other in more ways than one here at school. If I speak too loudly and with too much conviction and emphasis, as I often do, then I'm not being a lady. I am suddenly transformed into an outspoken, opinionated, dare I say it, I'm a lady. And then let's couple that with me being proudly black. Now I'm the angry black woman. Why am I so angry? Nothing makes me angry than people who think they know when they really don't. People who will tell me that they voted for Obama and that they would have voted for Hillary too, and in the same breath, tell me why affirmative actions reverse racism and retell the story of a black kid who took someone's, a white person's, spot at Harvard, Princeton, or Yale. If I were to ask what they now understand that they didn't know before they watched The Wire or listened to Talib Kweli or Common, or talk with their so-called really good black friend, mm. then I'm being aggressive. Am I calling them racist? Why am I attacking them? Why am I so angry? Because these are the same people who will say that they want to commit their lives to social justice and end inequalities in education, employment, and public policy. These are soon to be Teach for America core members, PhD students, and other people in our classrooms. These are professors and administrative staff members. These are the same people who you eat with in a diner, who you might, who might have the door open for you at the library, or who you might see at the store one weekend. Yes. These are the same people who say that slavery ended years ago, and that everything got fixed with the civil rights movement. They might say that their families aren't even from here, or just skip all the rhetoric and say that they're just downright not responsible for racism. But when I say that they are responsible, when I say that every white person benefits in some way, shape, or form from simply being white, and that the majority do nothing about this privilege, then I'm being aggressive. Why am I attacking them? Why am I so angry? Then there are those who acknowledge the existence of white privilege but refuse to talk about it. They just want to skip the hard, dirty, toxic work of really talking about racism and skip to the everyone is equal, we are all the same speech. And then there are those who realize that they are responsible for white privilege and understand how horrible racism is. And then they apologize. They repent. Because they think that that's what every black person wants. And apology. When in reality, they don't want me to feel better. They want to feel better. They want the vindication. Why can't I forgive them? Why am I being so aggressive? Why am I calling them racist? Why am I still so angry? I am angry because of the countless times every day when someone asks me to be nice or to calm down. I am angry because people would rather know me as the angry black woman instead of the daughter, the sister, the aunt, or the friend. I am angry because so many people don't understand what it's like for us others here at school. I am angry because so many people just don't even care to know. So next time you wonder why I am so angry, ask yourself why aren't you? Oh.
in general preventive medicine and public health. Dr. Harper is board certified in preventive medicine and public health. He worked as a physician at the Rikers Island Medical Unit, served as the first director of the Borough of HIV Services at the Nassau County Department of Health, and as a senior of vice, vice president of Community Affairs at the Nassau University Medical Center. Dr. Harper was then appointed as the first African American commissioner of health for Suffolk County. He created several new initiative programs, including an office minority health to address health inequities in the HIV Commission. He is now working at the New York Institute of Technology School of Osteopathic Medicine as the medical director of the academic health centers. The health centers located in Old Westbury Uniondale and the Central Islip provide primary care and other specialty services and assist in the training of medical students in outpatient care. I would like to present this award to Dr. Brian Harper. See, I fight my battle every time I pick up my textbook. 
fight my brother. Every time I put my pants to that paper, I was winning my battle, and I find out my GPA was all just 4.0. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
I know that the bishop shared my words. I just wanted to stop by personally and thank you all for attending uh, this most important event. I most certainly want to recognize and honor all of our distinguished honorees here today. You deserve a big round of applause for making our county an even better place to live, work, and raise a family. And I just wanted to pause again on our theme tonight was really to focus on the contributions as we celebrate Black History Month, the contributions to health care. And I know that we have Dr. Larry Eisenstein here, our Commissioner of Health, and I don't think there's been a more engaged uh, Commissioner of Health leading uh, the county than uh, Dr. Larry Eisenstein, in fact, distinguished our great county in receiving many uh, national awards this year nationally recognized with three awards, and I think that's an outstanding uh, testament to his commitment to health care here in the county of Nassau. And I want to thank you, Dr. Eisenstein. And I just wanted to just pause, and, and I won't go through all my remarks, because uh, I know you're coming to uh, the celebration in here, but uh, with respect to medical pioneers, and we wanted to recognize uh, them during Black History Month here, that is again our theme his uh, contributions to healthcare. We had Dr. Charles Drew. He created the idea of blood to be stored for transfusions. We have Dr. Daniel Hale Williams. He performed the first successful open heart surgery. And Dr. Ben Carson, a special education student, went on to perform the first successful operation to separate conjoined twins at the head. Okay, so, you know, just pausing on these monumental achievements in medicine that have helped society here and many families, you know, affected by these illnesses is a great testament to the contributions that have been made. And it's fitting that we celebrate that and we recognize these achievements during Black History Month. So with that, I thank you all for receiving me here this evening. Special congratulations on the round of applause. Well, I shall have you in the space of Shana, but you be gracious as you lift up the light of this countenance. Let us mourn you. Let us mourn you.